Hello viewers, you are welcome to another episode of School on Hair. This is English language, we will be treating reading comprehension and what we will be treating in reading comprehension will be how to answer questions on test of grammatical structures. To answer questions on test of grammatical structures, <coughs> We have to know, it is very important for us to know the structure of these questions. Is, let us see. Now, questions on grammatical structures are set to assess students' understanding of, gram of grammar, which is the rules and regulations guiding the use of a language. Yes, grammar is the rule. Grammar encompasses the rules and regulations guiding the uh, construction of any given language. Point two, students or candidates are expected to identify the names of a given grammatical structure and explain its functions as it is used in the sentence. As it is used in the sentence. To do this, one must have mastered the rules of phrases and clauses. Yes, it is very important to master the rules of phrases and clauses. It has been defined of a phrase that it is a group of words that does not contain a subject and a predicate. Yes, when we say a group of words does not contain a subject and a predicate, we want to believe that the predicate contains the verb. It's a part of a sentence that contains the verb. And if there is no finite verb, per se, in any given structure, it is referred to as a phrase. That given structure is referred to as a phrase. Even at times, there may, be, there may not be the subject and we can have only we can have only the finite verb making up a sentence and it will make a sense but it has been defined of it that if there is no subject and there's no predicate there's no but believe me sincerely if there is no predicate at all in any given structure it is it will be rendered a phrase and it will not be a clause let us now examine the let us see the examples of uh, phrases that we have in english language the man the uh, these are the examples the man is an example of a phrase we can see that the man uh, it is the uh, the man as a structure is a combination of the article the definite article and the noun the common noun uh, man and coming together with the article the i mean the noun then we, it, they will both make up a noun phrase. There is no verb there. It is a noun phrase because it is added with the with the with the noun man. The other example we have is that beautiful baby. That beautiful baby also contains the demonstrative. The demonstrative. The uh, that we have the adjective beautiful and uh, the noun baby which is the head of the noun phrase it is a noun phrase there that beautiful baby it has no verb no finite verb and what i mean by finite verb is that the, the finite verb is the verb that inflects the verb that can be used in present that that, that can that, that can the verb that inflects is the verb that changes according to tenses and it is the it also changes according to the persons of the subject it changes let me quickly give you an example of that if a verb will change according to the persons of the subject we will have e a person e that is third person he dances if it is the second person now you dance if a verb can be used in that context, then it's a verb that inflects. It's a finite verb. Another one, if it will change according to tenses, he danced, past tense. He will dance, future tense. 
it's a verb that is in, that inflect so it's a finite verb there too the third example we have on the board here is good enough good is an adjective enough is also an adjective good enough is a it does not contain any finite verb so it's also a phrase this may not be a noun phrase but uh, it can be an adjective phrase you can use it as an adjective phrase or even as an adverbial phrase depending on the way you construct your sentence we have another structure here and that is on the table on the table can be an adjective phrase prepositional added adjective phrase or prepositional added adverbial phrase depending on the way we construct the sentence but all we need to know here is that it does not contain any verb it doesn't contain any finite verb finite verb it is it begins with the preposition on to the article the and the noun table we have the next one in the morning it is also an uh, uh, it is also a phrase it's a phrase that does not contain a finite verb very fast is also a phrase so these are the examples of phrases these are some examples of phrases that we have in english language let us see the clause the clauses now definition a clause is a group of words that contains a predicate or a finite verb. If a group of words contains a predicate, then it is a clause. It is a clause. I've told you what a finite verb is. And uh, these are the examples of clauses. The first example we have, if you want to see me you will come if you want to see me you will come if you want to see me is seen as a subordinate uh clause yeah it's a subordinate clause here yeah. and because it begins with the word if it is given a kind of condition so it's a subordinate adverbial clause of condition here you will see me is the main clause that is in this sentence the sentence is divided into the into two clauses main clause and subordinate clause main clause can come either at the at the beginning of that sentence or at the end the same thing applies to the subordinate clause it can appear at any position in that sentence all we need to do is let us identify the one the clause that is standing on its own and the one that is not standing on its own it is very important the second example we have on the board here is the man whose car got bent was crying the man the man here is uh the noun we have there or noun phrase whose car got bent is an adjective because it describes the man it's it lets us know the type of man that we are talking about not the man that is sitting on the tree not the man in the room but the man whose car got bent was crying so whose car the whole of whose car got bent was crying uh, whose car whose car sorry the whole of whose car got bent is uh, referred to as a subordinate adjective clause in this example and the man was crying the removal of any adjective from a sentence will never affect the meaning because adjective only gives more information about the noun in the sentence so when we have the man was crying so whose car the whole of whose car got bent only tells us the type of man that was crying yes these are the things we need to know about clauses a noun about this thing we are discussing a noun phrase or clause functions as either the subject of the verb that immediately follows it that, that 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 immediately follows the expression or the object of the verb that precedes it that is the that is what a noun clause will do if it's a noun clause or a noun phrase anything that is a noun whether a noun clause or a noun phrase it will not function as it will not modify it will not qualify anything it will only function as a subject object or a position 
or complement of the verb in that sentence. That is what you are saying there. And uh, if it is an adjectival clause or an adjectival phrase, as we have it on the board, an adjectival phrase or clause qualifies the noun immediately preceding it, while an adverbial phrase or clause modifies the verb in the sentence. Yes, as an if it is an adjectival clause or phrase, it has nothing to do with the verb again. It has nothing to do with another adjective in that sentence. If it's an adjectival clause or an adjectival phrase, it will modify or qualify or describe the noun that precedes it. It will modify the noun that precedes it. It has nothing to do with the verb there again. So if a structure, if you have identified, you, you have known that a structure is an adjective, adjectival phrase or clause, just know that it will do nothing aside from qualifying the noun that precedes it. All you need to do is be looking for the noun that precedes it. It is very simple. You can get it. And if it's an adverbial clause or phrase, it has nothing to do with any other word in the sentence than to modify or qualify the verb in that sentence. So be looking out for the verb that it will modify. That should be the next thing. If you have identified it to be an adverb, it can be an adverbial clause or an adverbial phrase you know how to make it a clause if it contains a finite verb and if it does not then it's a phrase and it fun to get its function it will be modifying or qualifying the verb that comes after it or that precedes it in the sentence thank you very much now answering questions on test of grammatical structures to do this, you must read the given structure with its other parts in the whole sentence. You know, after reading the, uh, the passage, when you get to the questions area, you read, they will give you the, what they want you to get its grammatical names and functions. Now, all you need to do is, you cannot work with it in isolation. You must take it back to the passage. So that means you make reference, you must refer to the passage. Take it back to the passage and see the other part of the sentence. See there. It is then, it is after doing that you can work on it. Without that, you will never get any, you may never get anything. So it's better to take it back to the to its other part in the passage. Now, the next thing to do after taking it back to, the, to its other part is to identify the name of the given grammatical structure. You have known how to identify it. If it contains a verb, it's a finite, it's a clause. If it does not contain a finite verb, then it's a phrase. Identify it. The next thing to do after identifying the structure is to state its function. And to do it, you must refer to the other part of the sentence which contains the given structure. Yes. Many candidates are fond of saying eh, it modifies the verb in itself. No. It's, the, a, structure, a given structure will never modify the verb in itself. It will modify the verb in the other part of the sentence. Do you understand that now? It will modify the verb. And uh, these are the examples. We have, I know the place where Barack Obama was born. The grammatical name where Barack, for where Barack Obama was born is adjectival clause because it contains a verb. What is the verb that is there? And that is was born. That is a finite verb. So it makes it a clause. And it describes the place where Barack Obama was born. That is what makes it an adjective. And also its function is this. It qualifies the noun place. Because that is what it describes in the sentence. It qualifies the noun place. Let us note this. It cannot qualify any of the words in the given structure. It can, like, for example, now, you cannot say where Barack Obama was born is qualifying uh, was born. Or is, is qualifying Barack Obama 
in its this, the, any word in its in itself in that same given structure no it will have nothing to do with that word don't let us forget that it is very important this is an we have one passage on the board for you here this is a passage on agugu cultural festival agugu village in kebi state is located on the northwestern border of nigeria an expected tumble in the village may land you in niger republic agugu fishing festival which is which starts from february and spills over into march the fishing festival takes place on river rima other events that make the agugu cultural festival spectacular are the cultural displays exhibition of handicraft actually camel or donkey races but it is the fishing competition that is the icing of the cake and it takes place on the very last day once the signal is given all the participants make a dash for the river armed with their fishing equipment a net scoop and a large gown amidst cheering singing and dancing until one of them emerges from the river with a catch bigger than bigger than that of anybody else once the agla emerges with a catch the i mean he feels is big enough to win the prize the fish is taken to the scales where it is weighed and the biggest is ascertained the lucky fisherman wins the prize then it is celebration all through no fishing is allowed at the festival spot until the grand show comes around the following year questions now where and when does agricultural festival take place a that's a b what do participants do before the signal is given to dash for the river c name two things that go on until one of the participants emerges with a catch d how is the winner of the fishing competitions chosen and e this is where we want to treat and it's an unexpected tumble in the village may land you in niger republic why is this so and to grammatical structures f1 what grammatical names are given to these expressions as they are used in the passage one where it is weighed where it is weighed two which starts from february and spills over into march three that make agugu cultural festival spectacular four until the grand show comes around the following year and five an unexpected tumble in the village to help us do this let me quickly explain this last one an unexpected tumble in the village you will see that an unexpected and unexpected tumble in the village you will see that it, it contains no verb and that makes it a phrase it's a phrase and uh, it is a noun phrase it's a phrase and it's a noun phrase then you can identify it its function now you can now identify its function it will definitely be a subject of a verb in that sentence so look out for the verb and get it it is very simple and these are the this is ex exactly the area i want i really want us to concentrate on or if you can answer all other questions and the last one g you have to replace the words with uh, the uh, with another words in the same tense in the same form and i pray you can get it don't worry you will relax <laughs> it's simple you can get it send your answer to the address displayed on the screen thank you very much